Alright guys, we are officially just over two weeks out from ya boy getting to go see The Batman. I managed to score some advanced tickets to see the upcoming superhero epic from Matt Reeves, and I thought a fun thing to do would be to come back to some of my favorite Batman films and series from the last few decades, and discuss what I think they did best and why exactly they remember the way that they are. And especially because I want to put it in sort of like a retrospective sort of look of like, you know, how good is the Batman going to be? I personally right now think it's going to be a masterpiece, but I realize that's putting the cart before the horse. I do also realize that over the next three weeks, we have Horizon Forbidden West, Elden Ring, and The Witch Queen. So I am going to be burnt the fuck out, but whatever, no big deal. Let's get started from where we should be at the beginning. I mean, Batman has always been an icon in media and cinematic entertainment since the early 60s and pretty much ever since then. He's been a staple, especially in the US, reaching thousands of people from even before tensions with Russia were a thing in the 70s. That feels way too topical right now. Moving on. So most people will obviously point to the Christopher Nolan films, and don't be worried, we will be talking about those soon. And those who don't point to Christopher Nolan will usually point to the Michael Keaton films or the Tim Burton films which we'll talk about closer to the weekend. But there is one that has been relegated to the time of memes and historical rose-colored glasses. But has it aged better than people gave it credit for? Or has it earned its annals in the meme hall of fame where we can look back and say, what the hell were we high on? Weed. The answer is weed. And coke. The 60s were kind of wild from all accounts. True, Robin. It was noble of that animal to hurl himself into the path of that final torpedo. He gave his life for ours. The Adam West 1960 Batman TV series was a mini turning point for the superhero genre as a whole. I mean, sure, we had attempts like The Flash, The Avengers, and eventually the Richard Donner Superman films in the 70s, but, you know, that was more towards the later half of the 70s, and they hadn't yet taken the world by storm at that time. Adam West's Batman was really kind of the first universally accepted superhero TV series and movies that kind of broke through the barrier and gave everyone the entryway to make something new. Quite astonishingly different. Though it wasn't really because it was necessarily good, in my opinion, it was kind of the exact opposite. See, with other iterations like Lou Ferrigno's Hulk series, was that it was still trying to take itself relatively seriously. Like, there was still this weird edge of like, oh, but the Hulk is such a badass, we gotta play into that. Despite that the production values were about as good as the first season of Always Sunny. Shut the fuck up. Right in, Shut like, the fuck up. Talking. But where the Batman succeeded, was by wholly embracing how whack and strange its material was and ratcheting up the cheese factor to a point where the humor became self-referential and slapstick. Hand me down the shark repellent bat spray. A routine question. Have you recently sold any war surplus submarines, and if so, to I mean, seriously, you can't watch an episode of Adam West's Batman portrayal and not feel a little bit of nostalgia tingle down your spine. Not to mention there were some genuinely laugh-out-loud moments. It's not for mortals like us to tamper with the laws of nature. Indeed, Al. I've rarely met a girl who's such a potent argument in favor of international relations. I mean, this was also like the time of propaganda and filling TV with tons of references and sponsor placements about healthcare and taking care of yourself, drink Pepsi and all that fun anti-communist shit. So I mean, sometimes the episode would border between the referential and just being outright stupid. But I mean, looking back at it, the ratio between fun and ridiculous was generally pretty well balanced, which is a good thing. And at the very least, it makes the series and movies rewatchable when you're just in the mood for a laugh. Show me Miss Kitka or I'll wreck this place with my dying breath. You filthy criminals. Surrender, you criminals. You abominable outlaws. Obviously, one of the chief complaints about Adam West's Batman portrayal is that in comparison to modern interpretations and the turn of the Silver Age of comics, he's just too fun, he's too campy uh, to truly be Batman. You know, Batman is supposed to be sad, gloomy, and grim all the time, and then people don't realize just how strange and wacky the first few iterations of Batman really were, even prior to Adam West. Yes, his origins were tragic, obviously, but his enemies, like the Joker and his persona, were built around the concept of playing into that fun for everyone mantra that Superman had popularized in years prior. I mean, as fun for everyone as Batman shooting people and stopping crime sprees can really be, but eh, I digress. But either way, you know, until Tim Burton kind of came along outside of comics, Batman was just a pretty colorful character with a lot of cheesy B-movie aesthetics and dumb one-liners that was emblematic of what people wanted at the time. And for that time, 
that was just the way forward for everything that came to Cape Crusaders and Superman alike. My overall point to that being that applying the coat of dark and brooding to the times of the 60s and the pre-silver age of the superhero medium is pretty stupid. Like, I get it, we all want your Batman to be a certain way, but Batman wasn't always dark and gloomy. Nowadays, you'd be hard-pressed to find an interpretation that isn't, but the times, they were a-changing. United World Organization! Precisely, Robin! You mean... Precisely, Robin! Precisely! Precisely, Robin, the only possible meaning. One of the most common reasons for people to shit on the Adam West series is because of how poorly a lot of the production value aged. And look, it wasn't absolutely a production that was tremendously underfunded despite belonging to an already massive profitable corporation. I mean, even the movie had a measly budget of like 1.3 million US dollars in comparison to other big budget blockbuster films like The Sound of Music, which came out one year prior and had a budget of like almost 9 million. So the comparison is, wait, no, why am I comparing these two? What, what this? Well, hold on. All right, so after Googling, turns out there was not a lot of superhero movies or TV series in these days at all. Okay, so either way, my point still stands. Most films didn't have a massive budget, leastways not ones for a genre that had yet to be dominated by really any one personality. So did Batman age well? I mean, not really, but on a tiny budget like that, most of which was probably going to Adam West, it's pretty easy to see why. Ranking the Adam West Batman series is a lot like claiming that the Monty Python films are the funniest films ever made. On one hand, you'd find a lot of people who do agree with you, but while drama, thriller, sci-fi, etc. can kind of be objectively deconstructed, humor is much more tricky. And while no mistake, the 1966 Batman series and movies were 100% a comedy, mixing elements of the Three Stooges, Monty Python, and Mel Blanc for occasionally great results, it may not have aged incredibly well in many areas. But if you get a few shots deep or are similarly mentally affected, this is a trip through time that is worth taking about once a year or so. So thanks for checking out the video guys. Be sure to leave a comment down below on what you thought of the Adam West series. Is it one of your favorites? Is it one of your least favorites? Let me know down below. Be sure to like the video, check out our other content. Stay tuned for more Batman stuff as we get closer to the Batman from Matt Reeves. We will talk to you next time. Stay safe, stay hydrated, take care of yourselves.